Jeff Lannon, I loved my grandparents. They were avid gardeners and it was a highlight of my childhood to visit them. I have fond memories of picking turnip greens with my grandparents and selling them by the side of the road when I was young. As I've grown older, I realize my grandparents have had a profound influence on my life. It makes me think about God's design for family. God loves the family unit, and we see story after story in the Bible outlining generations of families. While parents play an amazing role in the lives of children, grandparents are also special influencers as well. There's such value in multiple generations feeding into our children that I decided to ask my friend David Apple his thoughts on the subject. David is a minister and currently the adult specialist at Lifeway. He's a proud father and grandfather and he uses his experience as both as we talk about influencing children through multiple generations. So David, looking at families, you're with families all the time, and so families with multiple generations active with grandparents and parents, um, how do you find that balance of being a grandparent in your, well, I mean, I know you live in Nashville right. and your kids live in Denver, but how do you find the balance between being a grandparent and not over-influencing yeah. into that parent's life? Because I'm sure sometimes your son or you know you might say oh I would have done that differently so how oh do you yeah that's going to that? always be the tendency mm -hmm. you know we always think we know the best mm -hmm. now let, instead of talk, so much talking about me let me talk for just a minute about our daughter-in-law's parents okay our youngest grandchild is special needs mm -hmm. and extreme special needs so Carrie's parents have basically moved into the community to help raise the grandkids. Okay. Now that to me is a real extreme kind of an instance, but it has modeled for us kind of a, a need for a balance mm -hmm. and uh, I think a very positive expression. They both love the Lord. They both um, very interested not just in the two older grandkids, mm -hmm. but in, the, in all of them. So to, to try to figure out a balance, I think all of us as parents and grandparents need to understand that we really have been given a, a biblical model and biblical role of um, partnering together to raise the kids. I think the parents understand that it's their biblical role to raise the kids. So then it's our, our role as a grandparent or grandparents to support the parents. Mm -hmm. That becomes, I think, the important thing. So it's, it's not like, okay, you've had your role, you've had your chance, you know, now it's our turn. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think my job as a grandparent is to support the parents and encourage them in their walk of the Lord without trying to say, you know, mm -hmm. you're doing it right, you're doing it wrong. It is, um, it's a fine balance. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if anybody's doing it exactly right. Right. But you just have to support them. That's a, yeah, well, that that's really is true. Yeah. That's probably the and best that's probably your prayer as word. well as to, that they would yeah. raise, your kid, raise their kids to love the Lord. Well, and actually, in our case, that's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, they're still young, um, young family. So without trying to say, here's what you do right, here's what you do mm -hmm. wrong, I think it is kind of a biblical thing. You see this in your church. You want to encourage the parents at any age to dedicate their kids to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not a hands-off thing. It's not so much now it's the church's job or now it's just what. But we are really saying we want those kids to come to know the Lord, not just that one-time thing, but as a, as a lifestyle. So we want to model that. Mm -hmm. I, see we, I think we need to model that as parents and as grandparents. So there, it's not like, okay, who's got it figured out just right? It is a journey. Mm -hmm. What is something that you want to teach your grandchildren? We want our grandkids to know they're valued mm -hmm. and they're loved, not so much because of what they have or don't have, not so much because of what they do or don't do, but they are extremely well valued. Mm -hmm. And so we also want to make sure they understand that, that, that we really understand God's got a plan for them. We're not, not, we're not here to tell the kids or the grandkids what God's plan is, but that's one of those neat things that we are, you know, out of a relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. We want them to, um, to love and to trust the Lord and to, to understand He cares for them. So I think, think, think really part of it is we want, genuinely, we want our kids to, to come with a, a growing love relationship mm -hmm. with the Father and not so much, excuse me for saying this, but not so much to be religious, mm -hmm. but to have a relationship with the Father. Right. And I think that's modeled. Mm -hmm. It's not like we do a great job or don't do a great job, but I think the kids and the grandkids start understanding you're, you're doing things to, 
be religious, to do churchy things, right. good or bad, mm -hmm. or we see you in a transparent way trying to love and trust the Lord at all stages. Mm -hmm. Now, Jeff, for our family, that has been a real challenge mm -hmm. with the extreme physical challenges of our young, youngest grandchild. Mm -hmm. So without going into a lot of details, it is, you know, all, all um, the families praying for miracles, all the families praying for, you know, God, would you do something? And I'd love to think we're seeing that, but at the same time, uh, we still have a three-year-old grandson who is basically paralyzed, a lot of brain damage, and um, we may be learning more from the other grandchildren, mm -hmm. a persistence on, we believe God can do something. Mm -hmm. And if we ever see it or not, we still want to love and trust the Lord. Boy, that's, that's a challenge. That's awesome. It, so they're, they're learning faith in God through watching their little brother. Yeah. That's really awesome. And, and the response from parents, not just to his needs, mm -hmm. but to their needs. Right. So yeah, it is not like everything works like we would want it. But yeah, we, um, I think we learn from the grandkids mm -hmm. and, and that childlike faith, mm -hmm. but in um, you know, the, the discipline, not just you're doing it wrong, but um, we are learning from you as well. Sure. Interesting journey. Yeah, so what is something that you see as you look at this generation mm. that is missing? Like what, oh, something wow. that's been lost that you wish was still there, that you would... Yeah, you know, the younger generation or my generation? Which one are you thinking? Both ways. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this sounds like I figured it out, and I haven't. But I think my generation has, in a very negative way, passed on this dependence on consumerism. The more we have, the happier, happier we'll be. Boy, you know that's a lie out mm -hmm. of hell. I think another thing that I think we have really missed, I think we've lost and we've passed it on to our kids and our grandkids, is the busier you are, the more fulfilled you'll be. Mm -hmm. I think those are just, well, lies we need to repent of. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a, an attitude. I really think par part of my generation needs to admit and to help our the next generations realize, well, we've made some major mistakes along the way that God can still use. Mm -hmm. And it's not like if you're wet, rich, you're doing it wrong. If you're poor, you're doing it wrong. But it, it really does balance then with a relationship sure. with the Lord. I think the younger generation, our grandkids, let's say, mm -hmm. are wanting and needing from us a, a transparency. Not so much, here's what we did right, here's what we did wrong. But, but they're also needing a model. They're needing someone who say, I've, I've lear I'm learning from mistakes. I'm also learning from wisdom. Mm -hmm. So I want to be careful and not say, you need to do it because I've told you to do it. But you know, we, are, we need to be learning rightly based on pr biblical principles mm -hmm. and truth. So where that comes down in all of the, what do you learn from each other? Mm -hmm. What do you pass on? I, th I think we've just got a great opportunity to say, like any other generation, we have not, uh, we're not perfect, mm -hmm. but we are part of a, a legacy of faith. Somebody mm -hmm. shared with us about learning to love and trust the Lord, and we want to pass that on to someone else. Mm -hmm. And um, it's pretty important. Yeah, that's interesting that you say that because I, over Christmas, was talking to my cousin, and he, um, he is away from the Lord mm. but he said you know I think we just always had to be so perfect in our yeah. family yeah. and I thought well I really I don't my parents didn't raise me exactly the same way as him and I thought why is it that we've never exposed our failures to our kids yeah. they need to know that we're not perfect and we're gonna mess up and that we're gonna love them through it I think a religious background of people not just me not just you is if you do something wrong, then you can be kicked out of the club. Mm -hmm. You can be kicked out of the family. Mm -hmm. And that is not biblical. Mm -hmm. I mean, matter of fact, we, we know, um, we understand the scripture to say that, you know, it's, it's through the, the transgressions, it's through our sin, it's through our you know, mistakes that we come to realize we need a rescuer. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a religious experience. It is, we are on a journey, yeah, faith, mm -hmm. But we're also on a journey, not to perfection, but to relationship. Mm -hmm. And that is hard to admit. That is. That's cool. 
Well, thank you so much for sharing that and um, being here today. I am honored. Love your church. Very grateful. Thank you, guys. Thank you. In Deuteronomy, the Bible speaks to the idea of passing God's commands to our children and our children's children. We've read about when Paul talked about the faith of Timothy's mother and grandmother and how that shaped Timothy's character. And in Psalm 103:17, we read, But from the eternity to eternity, the Lord's faithful love is toward those who fear Him and His righteousness toward the grandchildren of those who keep His covenant, who remember to observe His precepts. Embrace the multi-generational blessings God has given your family because your family matters. If you liked what you heard today, please let us know. Press the like button and give us a thumbs up. Share this video on social media and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep you in the loop for new episode releases. We do what we do to help you with what you do.